What's up, Whisker people? Chad Ferguson here, Catfish Edge. Going to talk a little bit today about sonar. Now, I covered a little bit of information a few weeks ago about the Humminbird Helix G2N that I have been in the process of installing on my boat, swapping out the Onyx. And I've got that Helix G2N installed now. And I want to talk a little bit about a couple of tweaks that you need to be mindful of when you're installing sonar unit and make sure you get the best images. Now I've talked about this, some of this in the past uh, in a previous video. Uh, first and foremost when you're installing sonar make sure you've got good clean power to it. Be really careful uh, to make sure you don't have any interference. You can go back and check out a video that I did about sonar installation tips to get even more details about that. The thing specifically I want to cover today is transducers. So what happens is people see screenshots that I post on the internet. I've got people that get in the boat with me and they say, uh, man, you know, my sonar doesn't look anything at all like yours. The images don't look anything like that. They're not anywhere near as clear. And a lot of times it's the exact same sonar unit or a very similar unit and people just can't get the same performance out of it. So one of the things that you want to make absolutely sure that you do is that you've got a good, clean transducer installation. So I installed the sonar unit, installed the transducer. I had to move the transducer a couple of times because I was getting interference. I fished from a 24-foot Sea Art Pro Cat 240. It's got flotation pods on the back of it. So getting the transducer placement on the back of the boat uh, can be a little bit tricky sometimes with those flotation pods. So I had to move the transducer several times. Once I finally got it moved and in the right location uh, where I was happy with it and I wasn't getting any interference from the flotation pods or anything else, then I went to the next step of leveling the transducer, which is what I'm going to talk to you about today and show you how to do. Without that transducer being leveled, you're not going to get the best images possible out of your sonar unit. So you want to make sure that you level the transducer correctly. What a lot of people do is they just kind of eyeball it on the trailer. They get out on the water, they kind of drive around, look a little bit, then they'll pull it back up on the trailer, adjust it a little bit more. They may repeat that process a dozen times. And even through doing that, it's very, very difficult to get the transducer perfectly leveled using that process. So I'm going to show you today how to get the transducer perfectly level one time out on the water and what you want to keep in mind when you're leveling the transducer to make sure you get it perfect the first time out so you can get uh, on the path to getting those crystal clear sonar images from your unit. Now there's some additional steps that I'll cover in some future videos, little tweaks and things that you can make to get better performance out of it. But without having a good clean install and out without having that transducer perfectly leveled, you're not going to be able to go through the next steps and get to that kind of top level performance with those crystal clear images. One of the easiest ways to tell if your transducer is not level is to look at your 2D sonar and get in an area where there should be high concentrations of fish and you won't see any arches. What you'll see is, is almost like inverted arches, depending on which way your transducer is tilted. They'll be elongated and they'll be facing either forward or backwards. And then once you get the transducer leveled, then you'll begin to see traditional fish arches like you see in this screen here. Now another way to tell is to use your side imaging sonar and you can drive by something that's straight in the water like a boat ramp or a bridge column. If the transducer is not level, it'll usually look distorted. So now I'm going to head out on the boat and get the transducer leveled. Now it's going to help if when you go out to do this, if it's not really, really rough water. The day that I did this, the water was rocking pretty good, but it wasn't so bad that I couldn't still get this done. Now I typically have anywhere from one to four people in the boat with me when I'm out fishing. But when I went out to level my transducer, I was by myself. So what I did is filled up the live well on my Sea Art Pro Cat 240. It's an 80 gallon live well. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it full because putting all that water in the back end of the boat will kind of help compensate for me being alone and average out the weight so it's more comparable to what it's like when I'm normally fishing. Then once I've done that, what I'm going to do is get my 2D sonar turned on and get my boat speed up to my normal scanning speed. 
Now on the low end, I'll go two miles an hour. If I'm really looking slow, trying to get some super detailed image, on the high end, I'll go four. So what I'm gonna do is go three miles an hour. So now that I've got the boat up to three miles an hour, I'm gonna take a small level. Now the best option is to use a torpedo level. And I'm gonna line it up to something on the gunnel of the boat. You wanna make sure that you have a good reference mark to come back to. So what I've done here is I've lined the end of the level up with the end of the side of my console because it's closest to the gunnel of my boat. And in these windy conditions, there's no way I'd be able to rest it on the gunnel. You may have to take a Sharpie marker or a pencil and draw a little line to work with, but you wanna make sure that you can get the level back in the same place. And now what I'm doing is taking some coins and I'm putting some coins up underneath the end of the level while the boat is moving at scanning speed that I've used as three miles an hour. And I'm trying to get the bubble on the level perfectly leveled on the side of the boat. So I'm just gonna keep adding coins until I get that level perfect or as close as I can get it. It may take you a few attempts to get it right. Once you get it leveled, then the rest is pretty easy. So there we go, now I've got it level or at least as close as I'm gonna get it in these water conditions. So now what I'm gonna do is just keep track of the coins that I had in there. So I'm just gonna show you here kind of what I had underneath there um, as an example. So I'm gonna grab these coins, throw them in a separate pocket so they don't get mixed up with anything else and head back to the boat ramp. Once I get back to the boat ramp, then I'm gonna get the boat out of the water, put it on the trailer and go back to where I can put the boat and the trailer on level ground. So once the boat's back on level ground, I'm gonna go back, put the level back in the same place that I had it on the side of the boat. Again, you may wanna do this on your gunnel. And I'm also gonna put the same number of coins up underneath the end of the level. And then once that's set up, you're gonna go back up to the jack on the trailer and raise the level of the jack until you get the level on the gunnel leveled again like it was out on the water with the same number of coins underneath it. Now depending on your trailer and how your boat rides in the water, you may need some blocks or something else to put up underneath the jack on your trailer. The end goal is to make sure that you get the level back to level again. And then once I've done that, I'm gonna go back to the transducers, loosen them up, and put the level on the transducer and get those perfectly leveled the way the boat is sitting with the jack up and the level perfect on the gunnel. And then once the transducer is perfectly leveled, I'm gonna tighten it up. Now really of everything that you're gonna have to do, this is the hardest part because a lot of times as you try to tighten up the transducer, it will move on you and raise up. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're extra careful while you're doing this. Make sure you keep it leveled while you tighten the bolts on the transducer up. And then once you get everything tightened up, double check it again, just make absolutely certain that it's still setting level. And once you get that completed, then you're done. That's really all there is to it. And again, Getting the transducer leveled and getting it to stay level while you tighten it up is really the hardest part of everything that you have to do. Now, if you're running two transducers like I am, then just repeat the process on the second transducer and you're done. So thanks again for watching. That's how you level transducer on your boat. Again, I'm running a Humminbird Helix G2N, but it doesn't matter uh, which sonar unit you're running, which brand, the process works for every one of them out there. Uh, if you'll follow these steps, it'll really do wonders to making sure that you're getting the best images possible out of your sonar unit. If you like this information, make sure you hit that thumbs up button, let me know. Make sure you subscribe to the Catfish Edge channel. And if you got questions about this or anything else related to fishing for catfish or suggestions that you'd like to see in future videos, make sure you go down below and leave a comment. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you head over to catfishedge.com because the information you find on YouTube is a very small portion of the cutting edge catfishing tips, tricks, and information that you'll find available from Catfish Edge. Till next time, I'm Chad Ferguson, catfishedge.com.